taking to the road. Dotsie, what should we expect here on the final day of the Worlds? Well, the roads are completely dry. All the oil is gone, so I think we'll expect no more slip sliding around. And I believe it is time for the big men of the classics to come back from their summer slumber. All right. When you talk about big men, you have to start the conversation with Peter Sagan, maybe one of the best bike handlers in the entire world. Yeah, he's so technically savvy. You know, the pressure of the favorite is he's definitely going to have. Everyone thinks this course suits him. We're not the only ones. He did win the Amgen Tour of California, and then he had a string of seconds. He did win stage three at the Vuelta, showing that he really was coming back into top form. But few are going to work with him today. So he may have to pull this off solo, or he'll get stuck in the brake, and he's going to get stuck driving it. And Peter Sagan has done that before, so we'll see what he can pull off today in Richmond. The defending champion from Poland is Mikhail Kwiatkowski, and this young man is so talented. But Dotsie, unlike Peter Sagan, he's got a pretty strong team that will work around. Him. Yeah, and he's no stranger to tough finishes, tough, hard uphill finishes. He was third in Flesh, third in Liege, best own Liege, and Amstel Gold. He won that race after the Kahlberg, bridge to a brook, big bridge to a break, and won that sprint exactly like these races have been finishing all week long. How about the big German, John Degenkolb? If it ends in a big sprint finish, you've got to make him the odds on favorite. He he is my pick, and you know why? You guys think I'm mushy, but he's got the biggest heart after three misses in the Vuelta, and then after working for his teammate Tom Dumoulin all week long, he pulls off that final stage of the Vuelta. He went 400 meters out, all heart, and brought that team morale back up. You talk about a man who can win a classic, the winner of the Paris-Roubaix. Well, we look at the resumes of these three gentlemen who we think will be in the mix. Peter Sagan, of course, he is always in the mix in a podium. The defending champion only has one win this season, but his sixth world, and of course, John Degenkolb in his eighth world appearance. So those are the international favorite. The Americans can fare well today on the podium. This is a tough course for them, and they've said it. Alex Howe specifically said, you know, this course is not really suited to us at all. We're going to have to come up with some kind of scheming or special sauce to make it across the finish line first, but I know that they will be fighting every last minute of this because it is on home soil, and man, these crowds are yep. already starting to build. Well, they are filling in here in Broad Street. Brent Bookwalter may be the Americans' best chance at a podium. He's a very savvy rider, and you talk about someone with a little bit of mojo going, this may be the year that Bookwalter gets it done. Yeah, I mean, he's most suited to this course here, in my opinion. He was phenomenal at the USA Pro Challenge. He really was coming on for him then. He's got some good training since then. He feels great. He feels fresh. So he's my pick as far as the Americans go. So Brent Bookwalter from Team BMC riding for Team USA today. Some other Americans of note. Tyler Farah, he has been around the game for so long. His ninth world's appearance. He knows what it takes to get up there, but he may be in a supporting role. And Alex Howes, the youngster, he may surprise some people today. He could. Uh, Tyler, I think, will definitely lead the team in experience. But we haven't seen the depth from him uh, recently. And I, I don't think he's got the finishing speed that these guys are going to have. A lot of people may be wondering about Taylor Finney. He's coming back from that injury. Looked very good at the Tour of Utah, Tour of Colorado, the U.S. Pro Challenge. Is this some kind of race or is it too long? 162 miles for him. Is he going to be more of a support role? It is. He's coming off injury. So th it, it, it could get long out there. Uh, absolutely. But I think that... Um, the one thing about this course that's fantastic for him is he has an, a massive anaerobic engine, and that's what this course requires. It requires you to go very deep and then be able to recover quickly and do that times 16 times. Well, he is one of the most talented riders out there. Remember, it's 16 laps today on a very long course, over 160 miles. Does he have the firepower to get him to the finish line up Governor Street? Yeah, well, he won the 2015 Tour of Flanders, so he is the Cobbles hard man, right? And he was second in Milan San Remo. I've raced that race, and that finish is very similar to here in Richmond. So keep an eye on Norway's Alexander Kristoff, 42 pro wins. Greg Van Avermaet rides for Team BMC, and the man from Belgium, again, probably knows the cobbles pretty well. Right, and he's on that very deep Belgium team. He did have a stage win at the Tour where he beat Peter Sagan in Stage 13. He won the Tour of Belgium and top five at all of the big classics, Flanders, Roubaix, Amstel Gold. So, oof, yeah, he is going to be good today.
Fellow countryman Philippe Gilbert also here in Richmond looking very strong. We talked about just how deep this Belgian team is. Yeah, and he uh, he won stage two of the Giro, but then he's been very, very quiet since then. But if you remember, the last time he was very, very quiet was in 2012. He won world championships that year. Trying to get back to the 2012 form and that rainbow jersey. How about Alejandro Valverde out of Spain? Now, my good friend Paul Sherwin brought it to my attention. He has the most medals without a goal. He's got two silver and four bronze at the Worlds. Yeah, I think it all depends on if the Spanish team can get it together. And they don't ha hopefully have the same uh, issues in fighting that they had in 2013 when Rui Costa ran away with it. But um, if anybody can finish on a finish like this, it's Valverde. All right, let's talk about maybe some other countries, some other teams, some other players in this one. You kind of like the Italians as well. I do. I kind of like Viviani. Or I really like Viviani. Yeah. I shouldn't just say I kind of. His recent form, amazing, right? Three stages in the Tour of Britain. And he was third in Kern Brussels Kern and people aren't remembering that I think that he can pull this off today I mean obviously if he comes into the finish in the last 800 meters it's all Viviani but I think he'll be fine getting up the last governor's hill, hill climb that is the Dotsie Bausch crystal ball pick of the day go Viviani and Italian let's talk about team tactics because to get your man or one man to the finish line we saw yesterday the USA women working very hard for Megan Gornier you've got to have a pretty strong team which teams do you think will play hardball out there and who has the firepower to do it well I, I I just think it's bla blaringly obvious that it's the Belgians. I mean, they, they're they're just they have so much depth. So they have Van Ambermont and Gilbert. If it ends in a small group with like two laps, one laps to go, and you get that selection because both of them can just be oh phenomenal. Then you've got Tom Boonen, right? He, I mean, he he's a stud. Yeah. And I think that he'll sit a little bit bit pretty throughout the race, stay relaxed. I mean, he has so much experience. Right. So if it comes down to a larger selection sprint, he's my pick for that. But they have some young guys in there that can win the race as well. Level the cruise to the finish line, beginning his salute a little early. Yeah, that was the bravest run to the finish that I've ever seen. It was pouring rain, and he went down that twisty, wet descent like no other, and that's what pulled it off. But it was because he had the legs. His team was phenomenal all day long, and that's what I think that we're going to see at play today. We have to. It's such a long race. So many of the teams are going to have to do some early work to get their you know selection right. out there. I think that we're going to see an early break, and that's going to stay for a while. Maybe not very many of the favorites in there and then it's going to come down to those last two or three lapses which is what we've seen all week and no question about it team tactics will be huge the teams are very strong for all they've done the grand tours and everything who can handle a technical course like this well i really think we have between eight and ten riders that can absolutely win on this course today but Everyone loves Peter Sagan, and you know, it's true. Today is his kind of course. He is the most technically savvy rider that we have out here. I also love him for this because he's used to freelancing. And as you pointed out earlier, he's kind of had to do that all year long right. on his trade team. And he, he will be able to do that today. Anytime anyone gets in a break with him, they're not going to want to keep him there. Right. And so he's going to have to drive it. But he has the skill. He's got the fitness. He's got the confidence. He's got the calm. He's ready for this. He's my pick. Is there any chance that the field lets Sagan get away in a breakaway? Or is that if he gets into a break, do you have to track that down immediately? Especially if it's an early break. Yeah. Because then they've got the legs to go after. It's, it's, it's going to get crazy if it happens later on in the race, right? Two laps to go. I mean, right. everybody's going to be panicking, but not in an early. It'll be very interesting to see how... Now to get more on the cobblestones and to see how the weather might play a role here today and with the rain we had overnight, let's go to Dotsie Bausch, who's at the finish line with our Virginia Tourism Finish Line Report. Well, here's the good thing that plays in the ladies' favor today. It rained all night long. So finally, all of that oil is washed off the streets. It's washed off the cobblestones. So I think today that we are going to find them not as slick if it does start sprinkling again. It's completely dry right now. It's a little, still a little damp out there from the rain all night long and, of course, this morning. But it's drying off, and if it starts to sprinkle again, we're not going to see the ice rink that we saw yesterday because the oil's gone. So, go, go, take us into race overall. 
Well, she obviously had a phenomenal time trial. She's a strong rider. She said she wanted to come into this race and just be as calm and cool as she could be because that's when she rides at her best at a world championship. We're seeing her on the front all over today. She told me that she wants to be able to create a lot of options for her team in the road race. So that's why we're seeing her on the front. I think that we were expecting her to sit back a bit because she's phenomenal at the finish. But we are really seeing her at the front of Libby Hill, at the front of 23rd, at the front of Govers. And here we have an attack from one of the Polish riders. We need to see this rubber band snap sooner and later, and they're going to need to keep going after one another. So after this Polish rider goes, somebody else needs to go to stretch this out. Tati, it's a little hard for me to wrap my head around the idea of Brenauer riding to help her teammates out, considering last year she won the time trial, got second in the road race. This year she's been third in the time trial. So it's, it's a hard type of sprint that actually suits her pretty well. Right, but she said she's tr she wants to create options for the whole team. So I think that includes herself. And today she feels safest and best and most confident and crash. Oh, we have a crash. We have a crash around the right-hand turn that took out at least one or two riders, it looked like. As we saw it from overhead, it's one of the Americans who's down. Oh, that's Shelly Olds. Shelly Olds, a legitimate contender for the win today. Remember, and now needs she just a new won bike. the Madrid Challenge. She crashed out of La Course by Latour in the rain. She looks like she's in a bit of pain here, too. Now, she had a mechanical issue on the final lap at the Madrid Challenge. Look at that rear derailleur. And still recovered to get the win, but we'll see what happened here. There she is on the left, right by the stripe. Oh, and it looked like the rider that came by her maybe tagged her head with their foot. And her rear derailleur, if we see her bike again, was in the middle of her rear wheel, not even attached to the frame anymore. Got her teammate Taylor Weil still up here at the front in the red. Now, Dotsie, as far as this Shelly Olds development here, do you think she's pretty much out of it at this point? What's your opinion? Yeah, I do. Saw her come through the finish. She's a minute 37 back, so they're going to have to switch their focus to Corinne Rivera as their sprinter. Wow, that was a very interesting line through the corner. May have a couple riders come across to her. Let's go to Dotsy Bausch. Dotsy, what do you have? Well, I talked to uh, Iris Slappendale, who's on this Dutch team, and she said that their three bullets are Van der Breggen, Van Dyke, and Block, and that she said Block absolutely can pull this off today, off the front like this, that that's how she would do it if she was going for the win. So it's a little early, it seems, but she said this is one of the arrows that this team has to shoot today. Yeah, talk about a bullet, though. Uh, with 33 and a half K to go. Uh, Dotsie, do you feel like this has any chance of going to the line? Well, she's already looking like she's got a little bit of wood in her legs, as you guys can see on the picture right now. So I think no. The, oh, there's the peloton. They're bearing down on her. I'm going to say no. They're going to have to kind of like reshuffle, and uh, somebody else is going to have to come forward in the Dutch team. One of the issues we always have is the nerves in the World Championships. So we'll see, you know, was that more of a nerve? Organized, though. We've got Dotsie Baus at the finishing line. Dotsie, any news on some of the abandons? Yeah, we were in the feed zone, and it's pretty chaotic. I saw Nibali get a bike change, and we asked his mechanic why, and he said somebody crashed into his rear wheel, and it was just compromised, so he got him a new bike. Also talked to Daniel Ose, and he said that he crashed at the bottom of Governors into a barrier. His knee is pretty banged up. And I just asked him about the energy inside the Peladon, and he said, oh, man, it's so fast, chaotic. It's nonstop fighting for position, especially going into Libby Hill, because they go from four lanes down to one. Well, uh, we can see that we've seen that happen. It's getting to be very nervous right now, Christian. All these riders know this. These are the most important and critical lap this afternoon. And again, as we mentioned, another wonder of uh, under 23 year uh, world champions who are in the field. Uh, so uh, I believe Dotsie Bausch had a chance to speak to Michael Matthews. Dotsie, did you manage to speak to Michael I did. Matthews? He I did. He was very coy, <laughs> very kind of quiet. He said that he is in good form and that he feels like he's peaking for this race and that this course is very, very well suited for him and that the whole Australian team will be working for him. Well, thanks for that, Dotsie. He is a very quiet uh, guy, Michael Matthews, uh, despite the fact that...